place out in the future. Nice that you bring mm, more yeah. often on. Yes, indeed. And uh, and before we move on with any super chats, what we still have coming up, we have to move on to the final main topic yes. of today, namely the cancellation of the live action remake of Cowboy Bebop. Now, I noticed something really strange with this cancellation that has never ever happened to my awareness mm -hmm. with any other cancellation usually when something is cancelled if it's sort of like a regular tv series it comes like in the trades that like this series is renewed this one is cancelled so you get it kind of like that way you don't get like anything nothing is singled out it comes with all the other series this is streaming and when something is cancelled it just isn't renewed like for instance the marco polo it wasn't like any huge thing or something it was like a good time after season two or whatever the series is just a little bit too expensive the the financials aren't there so there's not going to be any more seasons that's kind of like it that's a normal thing and in i had case, friends i had friends who worked on the never filmed season three of marco polo they, it was actually scripted they had a writer's room they had all the scripts and then it just vanished yeah, but in this case, it's the headlines. This never happens. Mm -hmm. It never happens that it's the headlines of the trades that this series is cancelled. Big letters on the Hollywood Reporter, on the on Variety and Deadline Hollywood. All of them are running in big capital letters. Cowboy Bebop cancelled, and so quickly, three weeks after it premiered. This is unprecedented. There has never been this kind of focus on a cancellation ever before in Hollywood history. Now, I don't know that that's true, but I submit that there's never been this kind of coverage of a cancellation. Why is this cancellation getting such press and such attention rather than just quietly being brushed under the carpet, which is the usual way that cancellations of big projects that crash and burn happen. Well, I would, I would put it another way. Usually they will, even if they do decide to do this, unless it's something like the joke I made earlier, like the Polly Shore show, where it was clearly a disaster and they canceled it, what, like three, four episodes mm -hmm. in or whatever it was. Uh, this, I, I think you're right, Andre. This is like unprecedented, like the way they're announcing this before the show has even finished, kind of like having its ability to do its run on Netflix. Exactly. Right? I mean, the run ain't done, it's three weeks in. So the, it, with streaming, they usually give it time, it's not even been a month. Yeah, this is this is kind of a a, a bit up. This like, is unprecedented. Where, That's unprecedented, the word for I guess, it. is the word for it. So, like, let, let, let me hear your reasoning as to why you think this is, because I have a, a slight theory as well, and then I want to, of course, your Cameron and Arun as well, but, yeah. like, I know you, you've been wanting to hit on this for a while, so let's hear what you think. No, actually, I want to, I want to hear the industry oh, right. perspective from Cameron, because what, what it tells me is that someone is desperate to make it clear that this was a failure, and we are never to do that again. This is a narrative that is being put out there. Someone, for whatever reason, this I don't know. I won't speculate on what's the goal behind it. But when you have this kind of like, or with these headlines, someone is putting out a message that this was a mistake and don't do this mistake again. Well, I'm very interested to hear RM's perspective, and I and Thomas said he has a he has his theory. My perspective is is very simple, actually. Anime is a threat to Hollywood. Uh, it is seen as a threat by the current by the club of Hollywood that's still there, you know that that believes it can control the narrative of storytelling worldwide. And manga and animes have turned that upside down. My niece, she's 17 years old, is a huge manga and anime fan. Right. And she watches she watches more manga than she does regular animation or other stuff uh, or, you know, more anime. And so it's a it is a seen as a threat to Hollywood's effort to control where the narrative of storytelling globally comes from. And especially because the Japanese are not necessarily a woke culture. And especially with regard to mangas and animes, they can often be very anti-woke. They are often 
represent aspects of of human sexuality and other things that are, let's just say, more traditional in their perspectives about male-female attraction uh, and often some bizarre kinds of attraction. But it is something that is seen as a culture that is trying to supplant Hollywood's effort to control the global storytelling narrative. And so there is, in my opinion, yes, very much an organized effort to try to make people think in the industry, this is a message for the industry, this isn't going to make you money. Don't spend too much time on this. Don't give this any more of an audience and a boost. It's not going to matter because the audience already exists, like my niece. She doesn't care what Deadline has to say. She's going to keep watching this stuff. And so this is a mistake. That's my perspective. Yeah, 